Hi, welcome to the Powell Weather Channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about an overall pattern change that's looming. Before we do get started, if you do like weather-related content, please consider subscribing to my channel as I post about four to five videos a week. Uh, comment below if you found this video helpful and what would you like to see more of. So let's get started. So here is an overall ocean temperatures where we are currently on September 14th. You can see the extremely cooler waters around Australia. Some cooler waters come into play in the Eastern Pacific, but really extreme uh, warm waters up here in Northern Pacific. So right now, this, this is telling us a story of the higher pressures around Australia has really amped up, amplified the waters around the Eastern Pacific. And what's interesting is, is we're almost kind of transitioning to a, a weak El Nino pattern. Uh, we, we were classified as an Enzo neutral August the 8th, but I'm actually starting to see signs and the Southern Oscillation Index, which I'll show you the next picture frame, has kind of tell the story over the last month. So if you look at these numbers and we go by 30 day and 90 day average. So anytime I see a 90 day average more than negative eight, that's implying it's kind of shifting to a weak El Nino phase. Now, what that means is, is the Southern Oscillation Branch, we've kind of dried out over the last month in the South. Texas has been experiencing drought. A lot of the Southeast states have experienced in that ridge. But I'm actually starting to see signs that that might change over the next several weeks based on this leading indicator of the Southern Oscillation Index. So if we look at that overall pattern, that amplifies the Pacific jet. So in areas that have has seen drier than normal conditions over the last month, we might see a, a sudden pattern flip over the next several weeks that the Southern Oscillation Index is telling you that uh, we could see above average precipitation for the southern regions of the of the United States. So, so that's just something that I always kind of kind of look ahead. I look at all these different te teleconnections first, and the model is only a tool and not a guide. Okay, so I always always look at the the overall teleconnections first, and the models will will tell the story. So here, here is the overall precipitation in, uh, over the next two weeks. This is the latest Euro model. And like I said, it's, it's not actually picking up on that, that crash in the Southern Oscillation Index. So I think this will be further inland of these rain showers into the Southeast. And that'll probably be more evident of the overall tropical features that are coming into play that I'll tell you in a little bit. But what more people are interested in the shorter term is the overall pattern change as far as temperatures. So we, we've been, gosh, extremely warm over the last uh, couple of weeks, and we still are, but uh, there are signs in the horizon that fall is is coming in Feb uh, on September 23rd. So it, it'll be just in time. It shows the negative oscillation and that's crashing over sometime this week, and this is always kind of a looming indicator of what might play out down the road. So if we look at the fall temperatures on the first day of fall and the latest GFS model on uh, September 23rd, now, now granted this is nine days from now, but it shows the, the well below normal anomalies coming into the two thirds of the country. So this is a, a welcome pattern change that we're actually gonna experience at least about another week out, but this is something that uh, a lot of people would look forward to. We're talking highs in the low 80s uh, in, in, in the Dallas region and, you know, much, much in the 60s, even the 50s and pushing in the 40s coming into Canada. And these are high temperatures. And if we take it out another frame, this is I always like to call like the, the one, two punch. So the first wave is cold, but then it actually even gets colder as we go into the, the, the last couple of days of September, and you can see the anomalies even going into 10, 15, 20 degrees below normal in spots where we're talking high of 72 in Dallas by the end of the month. <laughs> Wouldn't that feel nice? But we're, you know, highs in the 40s in Michigan, 
uh, we're, we're, we're talking uh, highs in the lower 40s, pushing into the, the border of, of Canada. So a, a welcome pattern change is, is on the table um, at, on the second half of September. So now we'll kind of go towards the tropics. Here is the uh, MJO, the Madden Julie Oscillation. I kind of use this uh, tool a lot. Uh, as we go into phases eight, one, and two, as you've seen in my previous videos, this is your more active phases in the tropics, and this is going to kind of tell the story over the next couple of weeks, and this is not a phase that you want to be in as we're in the heart of hurricane season, which, you know, basically September 10th, but uh, typically September 15th to October 15th, we get about 60% of the storms that we see all year, and then we're going into the most active phases of the MJO, so which is not a good sign, so I, I really expect this to ramp up over the next couple weeks. And this is also not a good sign. So when you have this ridge over Texas, and which is gonna be building to the Northeast, and you have a ridge over the Great Lakes, you always have to look for convergence underneath of something developing off the Southeast coast. So we do have Humberto, and I'll show you that in a little bit, but this is kind of a, a prime target for an East Coast threat later on in the next week or two. The models are not hinting at that, but again, the teleconnections are saying that this potentially might have a 2004 type setup where it could be pretty active over the next couple of weeks starting, uh, well, really in a, in a couple of days. And for those, you know, September 15th to October 15th, we could be in a really active time frame as far as the tropics goes. So if you look at the overall steering pattern, when you have a high, a ridge to the north, the northeast over the Great Lakes, you, you definitely have to have, to have to watch out for an east coast threat. We saw Humberto, and I'll show you the map in a little bit, but it basically steers around the high and brings it towards the United States. So this is definitely something I'm looking, looking out for uh, later on down the line, especially as the, the, the JMA, the Japanese model, shows an amplified you know, upward rising motion, the vertical velocity index are in prime time phases of something forming and being really active overall our, over our phase of the United States. So that's just another sign. And so if we look at the, the latest NHC as of this morning, it shows kind of a two prong approach. It shows Umberto forming, the latest Euro model has it going out to sea, but it has a split of a tropical wave that we might have some in close development along the Texas coast. And we talked about homegrown systems, uh, you know, would be the threat this year. And again, it's implying that some sort of maybe tropical wave or something might you know, spin up in close development and give some welcome, at least rainfall into the te Texas region. But if we look at Humberto, all right. So most of the modeling, even the NHD guidance has it going out to sea, it has it hugging the coast and going into a potential hurricane as we go out in the next couple of days. But again, we've got that ridge to the north, okay? And so if you remember Gene back in 2004, where it kind of stopped, it felt that ridge and kind of did a loop and it came back and it affected the United States. So this is not out of the question. It's it, This is something that potentially could be on the table with Humberto or even another system, but I would, I would, uh, look for maybe potentially of a stall somewhere around Bermuda and maybe swing back and feel in the effects the week from now from that high and maybe head back into the United States. So that's that's something I'm gonna be uh, paying attention to because the pattern, uh, pattern recognition tells you that might happen, all right? So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Um, if you found this video uh, value, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel and you can also do me a favor and tell about 250 of your friends about this channel. I appreciate you guys' uh, support and stay tuned to the next video where I catch, catch me to protect you before and after the storm.